how's it going? So I haven't filmed anything this holiday season in front of the trees, so I thought I would take this opportunity and just do that because it's still up. You've probably noticed that I haven't posted in a while. I think my last video was up on December 8th, but I have just been going through a lot of things and I didn't know how to jump back on and just post another like vlogmas or Christmas video. Today I'm just like super real, no makeup, no <laughs> nothing kind of mom hair, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. I want to tell you what has been going on and I don't know if I'm going to talk about this more or if I'm going to need to take more breaks because this has just been so hard, like so hard, like <laughs> I didn't think it would be this hard. So let me just, let me just start at the beginning. On November 27th, this happened. That's right. <laughs> we got a positive pregnancy test on November 27th. Well, I'm going to take that back. I got a positive pregnancy test on November 27th. I didn't tell anybody. I just took one test and I got really, really scared that pregnancy wasn't planned and I didn't know how to process it. I didn't know how to feel about it. I didn't know who to tell first. I didn't know how they were going to react. I didn't I didn't have any of those answers and I just felt really scared. We got that test. I was so excited after I was able to process all of my weird emotions. It took me a few weeks to tell Brian and Delilah and I told them both at the same time. I didn't say anything to Harrison because he's two and he wouldn't have gotten it. It took me until the night when all of my world started to kind of implode to tell my mom. It was just horrible what happened next. So I was pregnant and it was it was going perfectly as far as like the pregnancy. Like my life had been kind of flipped upside down but I got to this point where I was excited for a third baby to join our family. I started envisioning what we were gonna do with the rooms, where everybody was gonna sleep, where if we were going to move, what was going to happen next? I started having all of these thoughts and making all of these plans. And then on December 13th, which was actually my mom's birthday, we were supposed to go out to dinner and do all of these really fun things to celebrate her. She was turning, she, well, she just turned 60 and we were going to do all the things and celebrate her. And I had been laying in bed all day and I had been having this weird pain all day long and at first it was just like all across my middle of my belly and then it started to be on my right side only. I finally got like I called my midwife and she thought that maybe it was like constipation or something and TMI but if you're watching this video TMI is something you might expect so TMI is not something that you expect. You might not want to watch the rest of this because there's going to be a lot that I'm going to talk about blood and all kinds of stuff. So anyways, I called her and she thought that that's what it might be, but it didn't feel like that to me. And in my heart, I just kind of felt like something was always wrong. I only took one pregnancy test and that was super abnormal with Harrison. I took pregnancy tests until like 12 weeks, I swear. <laughs> I took so many. I took ovulation tests to see what was going on. I took pregnancy tests. And yeah, I just took one with this one. And I, maybe I was being like kind of naive. Maybe I was thinking, of course everything's fine. But I don't know. I just took one and I just always had this weird feeling that something wasn't quite right. But I, so back, this is going to be all over the place because I'm not really reading anything or prepared and just kind of talking because that's just what I need to do. So I told Brian, I was like, I don't think this is normal. I think that something could be wrong. I noticed that the pain was kind of all on one side. And so I was concerned that maybe it was ectopic and that something was going to happen to me too. I didn't know. 
I had never experienced that in pregnancy. I, didn't, I mean, in pregnancy you have like aches and pains, and especially early you have like cramping and things that might set your alarm bells off, but nothing to where like you cannot get out of bed. I had to call my mom and my cousin who was supposed to pick me up and tell them that I couldn't get out of bed and that it just, I couldn't do it. I knew that something was really wrong. So we went to the ER, they were concerned as well. Like I was hollering and like screaming in pain. Like I couldn't sit still in the wheelchair. I couldn't stand. I was just, I was a hot mess. I honestly have never felt that pain before and it was worse in my mind than what I went through having Harrison naturally, like unmedicated birth. It was, it was horrible. I've never experienced something like that before. And so we get to the ER and they get me back real quick, which I did not think was a very good sign because the longer you wait in the ER, the less <laughs> the less serious I guess your stuff is. So they got me back really quick and they gave me pain medication. Morphine didn't help at all. Like maybe for like two seconds. I kept asking for more morphine like every 15 minutes because it just wasn't even touching the pain. They did say that it was safe for me to have Dilaudid. I mean there's a lot of research on that to say whether or not it was safe but I did take it because I just, I needed the pain to stop. I didn't know what else to do. So I did that and then they got me down to have an ultrasound. They couldn't see much on the over the belly ultrasound because I was only about, they estimated like six weeks, two days, something like that. They did an internal ultrasound and we saw our baby. We saw our baby at six weeks, two days and the baby wasn't in the tube, it was in the uterus in the right place where it needed to be, and it had a heartbeat. And my heart just, like when I saw that little baby on the screen with a heartbeat, it just, I really connected to it. I didn't know, I didn't know that I would. And um, everyone tells you that when you see, when you see a heartbeat that, have less than like a 5% chance of having a miscarriage so I thought that I didn't have anything to worry about I thought everything was fine I thought that everything was gonna be totally fine and so they sent me home I just tried to get well I tried to rest and I tried to keep my pain managed and I was no of no use to my family i couldn't get up and be with my kids i couldn't hold my son and at that point i started feeling so guilty like i was having to protect this little unborn baby but i couldn't do anything for my earthside babies i felt horrible but brian was such a help and my parents were such a help in we had friends who were such a help to us during that time. So that was that was really good. But I still, I feel a lot of mom guilt about that, that I couldn't do what I needed to do as a mom. On December 13th, on the 14th, I stayed home and I didn't go to my work holiday party. I couldn't, I still couldn't stand or walk or do anything. The pain started to feel a little bit better each day. Oh, this is random. Okay, so the, the reason why the ER doctors thought I was having the pain is because they said I had a five centimeter cyst on my ovary, on my right ovary. And they said that's a pretty big one and they said it looked like it might have ruptured. So that could have been causing the pain. As far as I know, ovarian cyst ruptures can be really, really painful. And I am a person, I have PCOS, so I'm not a stranger to ovarian cysts. I've never had one rupture before, so I didn't know that pain. But on the 14th, back to that, I got home. I was still home and I was resting and, you know, Brian was doing everything and helping out so, so much. And everything seemed to be fine. Then on, maybe it was, then the 15th, everything was still kind of okay. I started on the 15th in the evening, I started spotting and I started to get concerned. I wondered if the blood could be coming from the cyst or whatever, I didn't know. I did bleed in pregnancy with Delilah for the whole time. So I don't, it could, it could have just been something that was normal, but it 
it kind of started to pick up. I went back to the ER on the 16th because I was concerned. I didn't know what the bleeding meant. I didn't know. I just, I didn't know. I'd already had all of this pain and I needed to know kind of which way things were gonna go so that I could start processing and healing if everything was not gonna be okay. And we went, well actually I went, Brian stayed home with the kids th that day. My dad actually met me at the ER, which was great, he didn't have to do that. And I went in and I waited a little bit longer, but again, they were pretty concerned based on my history from the previous few days. And they took me back and they did another ultrasound, although this time I had to really kind of beg for an internal ultrasound. I said I need to know kind of what what's going to happen here. And at that point they said that my cervix was open and they said that they called it a threatened miscarriage. The internal ultrasound showed the baby it was still measuring at like six weeks, two days. Although, you know, it, it wasn't like a 3D ultrasound, it didn't have a lot of technology, so they said that that dating, you know, you know, could be kind of off. So they weren't concerned that it wasn't showing any growth at that point, but the baby still did have a heartbeat that day, and the bleeding kind of tapered off. So I thought maybe it was just like a normal thing that was going to happen, maybe it was like a subchronic hematoma, something like that, who knows. So then on the 16th I didn't have any more bleeding and then the morning of the 17th I woke up and I had a lot of bleeding, like a lot, and it was bright red and I was having a lot of pain and cramping. Midway through the day on the 17th I felt like I passed a few large clots and I called my midwife's office for like a follow-up for the ER and they scheduled me to come in the next day and they took my blood levels and everything like that. Oh also so the first time I went into the ER my HCG level was 33,000 which is apparently a really good number for six weeks but then when I went back it was like a day and a half later it was only at like 47,000 so it wasn't doubling although they said that that measure is really only accurate if you're less than six weeks which you know I don't know I've always been told that if it's not doubling it's not normal I've never been someone where they took my HCG levels or had early ultrasounds or had to deal with any of that because it's just I've never needed to so I don't really know what my normal is as far as like numbers doubling and that kind of thing but I felt like that was not quite right. And again, I just had this like instinct that something wasn't right. And so then on the 17th, I felt like I passed like three big clots. And when I passed the last one, I felt, cause I had been so nauseous like this whole time, like crazy nauseous. As when I passed that last one, I didn't feel nauseous anymore. I didn't feel like I had sore boobs anymore. It's like, that was the minute when I wasn't pregnant anymore. And I know this is like probably stupid and I'm probably just like beating myself up and like torturing myself, but I just keep wondering like, did that poor little baby still have a heartbeat in my body just to know what to do to hold on to it? Was something wrong? And should I have tried to like not flush it down the toilet at least? Like, I don't know, these are all just like weird thoughts. So that happened and then I went the next day to my ER follow-up at my midwife's office and they sent me for an ultrasound again and at that ultrasound I could tell that there was nothing in my uterus that I had already passed everything and the doctor was really kind he came in and talked to me afterward and he didn't have to he was just gonna give all the information to my midwives and they were gonna call me later but he came in and he told me even though I already knew like I they weren't measuring a heartbeat, they weren't measuring a baby, I could tell because I had seen it before. And yeah, so it was just, I was kind of numb at that point because I, again, I just had a feeling that everything was already gone because I wasn't having good symptoms or anything anymore. So yeah, I have been having a really hard time with this one. As you know, I've had losses before. One was a chemical pregnancy and one was like a really early loss, maybe even also a chemical pregnancy. It depends on what you consider to be a chemical. But this one, I don't know, like I, I saw the heartbeat 
I saw the developing little baby blob on the screen and yeah that's really crappy it was so cool to see I don't have a picture of it or anything because it was an ER ultrasound and they couldn't print anything I guess it feels like I don't know if this is gonna make sense to anyone but it feels a lot like a death to me when I had my chemical pregnancy I rationalized in my head that maybe like the baby just wasn't up to par like something was wrong and it was my body's way of protecting us both before the baby's soul got there and i'm not really religious but i mean like there's got to be something that ignites you into who you are whether it's a soul or like whatever you believe but this time when i saw a heartbeat and then i didn't see anything anymore it felt like it felt like someone had died and I know you guys are gonna say that someone did die and that I should just feel what I feel but that's really hard too because there's a lot of people who have been telling me or encouraging me to just keep going with life and who don't really think that this deserves grief but it does to me and I just kept thinking when it was happening like what kind of world do I live in where whatever higher power whatever could take my baby right before Christmas I poured myself into Christmas with my kids and I don't know if you've ever watched the movie Watchmen but my husband and I watched that together a few days after it happened and there's this part where one of the watchmen says to this other character he says something about like what an extraordinary miracle it was that she was born when her parents weren't really ever supposed to be together and you know of all the millions of people in the world and all of the millions of sperm and egg combinations that it ended up being her and i just keep thinking about that with my kids after having this loss like how miraculous and incredible it is that they made it here and they made it here safely. That's really been helping me to focus on what I do have instead of what I don't have. But it's, it's just been hard to kind of move forward and that's why I've been gone. I didn't know how to just sit back in front of a camera and do a sit down video for you guys I didn't know how to just put up another Christmas video even though I have like tons of them edited and ready to go I didn't know how to do that so I didn't I just stopped posting and I didn't post on any of my social media or anything because I didn't know how I am back and I want to start posting daily again. <laughs> if I could stop being a hot mess, that would be great. I, I'm i back. I'm going to do planner stuff. I'm going to do all the stuff that you guys love. But I might talk about my grief journey. I might talk about what this loss has been like for me. And if you guys want to share stories of your own losses down below, that would be wonderful. I would love to hear about them. And I'm sure that it would help someone it definitely will help me to know that I'm not alone so thank you guys for being so wonderful as you always are and thank you so much for being patient while I get back to doing what I do and caring for my family during the holidays and caring for my own heart so if you guys have any questions about you know what I've been through or about loss in general about how I'm handling it about how I'm coping, anything, any questions, I totally welcome that. I'm pretty much an open book, so feel free to ask away or chat or leave any kindness that you have down below. So that's, again, all I have for you. I'm sorry this video was crazy long, but I just needed to tell this story. I needed this to be the first video that I posted before I came back, before I start doing, you know, my peppy regular <laughs> stuff. So. That's what I have and I hope that you guys have had a wonderful holiday. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope that you have had a wonderful winter holiday 
and I am sending you all so, so, so much love. And I, again, I appreciate you so much that all of you are still here. We recently became a community of 8,000, uh, even though I wasn't even posting. So if you are new here, thank you so very much for joining. If you are one of my current subscribers and you wanna know when I post a video, you can hit that notification bell. That's always a great thing to do because I will be back to posting daily and I have some fun things coming up to sort of brighten my spirits and hopefully connect more with you guys. And I guess, that's it. So, by the way, you guys, have fun today. You set my world on fire.